At the beginning of the summer, I decided to cancel my gym membership and see what would happen if I were to do only sprinting three times per week for an hour and nothing else. Here's what happened. Going to this experiment, I had three questions. One, is sprinting actually an effective way to lose fat? Now, of course, nutrition has to be on point for this to actually work, as fat loss is determined by whether or not you're in a caloric deficit. All the sprinting in the world will not lead to fat loss if I'm eating recklessly. I'll discuss my nutrition a bit more further in the video. Two, is it safe to do this much sprinting? I already know that many people who don't sprint regularly are concerned about whether or not a regular sprint routine will cause any pain or injuries. Three, can sprinting replace the gym entirely? I don't plan on giving up weights and the gym, but it would be cool to find out if and to what extent sprinting could substitute everything else I was doing previously. Here's the three rules I set for the experiment. One, I can only use my environment. This means I can't purchase any equipment. I can only use the tools available around the city of New York that are free and open to the public. Two, I will train for no more than three hours per week. Each sprint workout will be limited to one hour. The reason I'm doing this is because not everyone has the time or the desire to train for hours and hours and hours. Three, most important rule of all, only sprinting is allowed. This means I can't perform bodyweight exercises or even do any other form of cardio that may supplement the sprint training. Drills and movements that are or resemble sprinting is okay. On day one, my body weight was 117 pounds, which translates to 53 kilograms. Just kidding, that's my cousin on scale, not me. My actual starting weight was about 162 pounds, but I wasn't too worried about the scale because I'm focused on looking and feeling good, not about hitting a certain number. Only reason I'm even showing it is because I know people will be curious and I'm gonna get asked about it anyways. I calculate that I began around 15 to 18% body fat. Part of it was that my workout routine fell apart when COVID shut down gyms for months. Part of it was that I knew I wanted to do this experiment and make a video of the weight loss anyways. By day three, I realized that I had to plan my days carefully Otherwise, this experiment was gonna fall apart entirely. There was a bunch of rainy days ahead, so I had to make sure to plan my spring workouts around them. A little bit of rain is not a problem, but I wanted to avoid running in heavy rain. By now, you might be wondering if I had any plans of setting any personal records in terms of sprint times. The answer is no, at least not in this video. By the way, in case there's any confusion, when I say sprinting for an hour, I'm referring to the length of the entire workout, including warm-ups, drills, sprints, and a cool down. I wouldn't do this exact workout every time, but I would do it about every 10 days. It's day 10, as I was coming over here, I was thinking, I don't have anyone to time me and I don't have some sort of electric timing system in order to make sure that I can keep track of progress. After a proper warm-up and doing some drills, I'm gonna give myself 30 minutes and I'm gonna see how many 200 meter sprints I can do within that given time frame. I'm a bit nervous, but I'm about to set the timer. Let's go. All right, I just completed number five, and I got that cramping on my sides. So that's how you know it's game over. I'm pretty happy with five. I wish I could have got six, but now I know what my starting point is, and I know what to work towards and what to eventually beat. For those curious, by day 12, I was already at about 159 pounds. That's three pounds in about two weeks. That's roughly about 1.5 pounds per week. At that rate, I was confident that I would achieve a decent amount of fat loss by the end of 60 days. By day 15, I took out the track spikes, but the nature of the design, carbon fiber plate, the thin soles, and lightweight mask, once you take these out, the intensity of the workout automatically goes up a notch. I didn't take them out before because I was building up my feet, ankles, and calves to become stronger in order to handle a more intense workload from the spikes. This day consisted of working on starts over and over, which for me is honestly a weak point. And even though I'm not planning on competing any races anytime soon, there's a lot of benefits from improving the start that makes them worth doing, even for a non-competitive sprinter. What good is it to have stamina, speed, if you can't even get into your run fast enough? For example, this could benefit a basketball player going around a defender, or even someone taking a dog on a walk that suddenly drops the leash. The same day I began using the spikes, I also began massaging my foot with a small ace ball because although I didn't have any issues, I did feel the muscles on the bottom of my foot becoming tighter and tender as the days went on. Apart from this, I had no issues and that's because I approached my training in a very specific way. In my Usain Bolt video, I discussed how he didn't even train on the track all the time and often would train on the grass to put more work in with less impact on the joints. 
the surface on which you sprint is critical. By day 21, I saw that although I was making progress, I wasn't losing fat at a rate that I was excited about. I concluded that the main reason for this was because my nutrition was not on point, which makes this a great time to talk about how I was eating. In the past, when I've gone on diets, I relied heavily on counting calories, which works ridiculously well, and I'm not against it as long as your calories are coming from high quality foods. But doing that all day makes you feel like an accountant that's obsessed with food labels. Maybe it wasn't the best idea, but this is the first time I wanna try out losing fat without counting calories as well. The reason why I wanna do this is because something else that appeals to me about sprinting and maybe others as well is the simplicity. You can perform one single movement and get all these benefits. So I wanted to see what would happen if I kept my nutrition simple. The problem is I was enjoying summer too much and having too many cheat meals. So as I got closer to 30 days, I knew I had to scale it back if I wanted to lose fat at a reasonable rate. If you start alone, that's ideal because you don't depend on anyone else. However, if you can bring a partner, it makes things much better. Training with a partner makes the workout much more fun and intense. As I'm editing this video, I'm currently training with a high level sprinter from Jamaica and the workouts are very different. These sprint sessions, are 20% physical and 80% mental. But you don't need a pro to come out and train with you. You just need someone who has heart and is willing to push themselves physically and mentally. During the experiment, I was traveling around a fair amount, yet this did not interfere with my training at all, and here's why. Right now, I'm in New Jersey. I'm on a trip. I found this beautiful hill right outside the house, which I can use to work on my starts. And it shouldn't take long. It shouldn't take more than 30 to 45 minutes to get this workout done, and I can move on and hang out and have fun for the rest of the day. With sprinting, you don't have to depend on anything outside yourself to have a solid workout and switching up locations keeps things fun. That's the magic of sprinting. Even though I don't have a problem being consistent, I found that my workouts are much better when I'm working on something new and I'm much more excited about my training. So right now, we're at the biggest hill there is right here in New York City, at least from what I've seen, and we're gonna do sprints as the sun sets. We get the city right there in the back. It's gonna look dope. The plan right now is to sprint from the bottom to about this point right here where the crosswalk is. On camera, it doesn't look too crazy, but trust me, this is a steep, steep hill. Throughout this challenge, I can honestly say that I found some new spots around New York City that I've never even knew existed before, even though I grew up here. But even if you're not in a major city, there's gotta be some locations near you that either you haven't found yet or haven't sprinted on that may be fun. This could be near a lake in your town or maybe a steep hill by your house. I read recently that they built a 200 meter track on a roof so no matter where you are, there's a way to get it done. It turns working out from another item on your to-do list to a reason to get out of the house and explore your area. While at the same time, giving you flexibility to get it in a workout when you have a lot going on, but don't feel like going very far. By day 33, I was 158 pounds. I had lost four pounds in one month. This may not sound like a lot, especially since there's so much noise in the fitness industry that makes bold promises about losing fat in a short amount of time. The reality is that losing fat isn't the problem. The problem is keeping the weight off. In my experience, losing about one to two pounds per week, depending on how much body fat you have, has always resulted in a successful transformation. So staying consistent was actually never really an issue because it was only three times per week. And I'm not gonna lie, creating this video did help keep me accountable as well. I know keeping yourself accountable is hard. If you're someone who struggles with this, I highly recommend getting a partner to train with or reach out to me if you have any questions. Check the description in this video for more info. On day 46, over six weeks into the experiment, I weighed in at 156. On day 47, I found a sled available for free to the public. In the beginning of this, I said one of the rules was that I can only use my environment and cannot purchase anything. If you find something around where you live, it's fair game. We're making the world our gym at the end of the day. At Pier 40, they have a soccer field, and in the lower level, they have this football sled, which you can use. It's free to get inside and it's free to use a sled. As long as no one's using it, you should be able to use it as well. Some of you who live nearby may already know about it, but every time I went, it was empty, so I'm assuming it's not that well known. Time to answer the three questions that I had set at the beginning of the experiment. Starting with, is it safe to do this much sprinting? Fortunately, by the end of the experiment, I had no injuries, no aches, no pains, not even shin splints. Prior to starting this, I had some issues with my knee, which I had just taken care of, and my knees felt great week after week with no problem. I have a video on how I fixed and strengthened my knees, which you can find in the description after you finish watching this video. The next question, which I'm sure everyone wants to know, is sprinting actually an effective way to lose fat? What I'm showing you are realistic results for someone with average genetics. Here's how my physique was looking after 60 days with only three hours of sprint training per week without counting any calories. 
overall, I would say sprinting is for sure an effective way to lose fat, even if you don't have tons of experience in sprinting and only commit to a few hours per week. It may take a bit more time if you're looking for a Gymshark sponsorship, but if your goal is simply to get rid of a dad bod and look good at the beach in a fun, simple, and efficient way, there's no better way. This leads to the final question of the experiment. Can sprinting replace the gym entirely? In my experience, if your goal is simply to look better than the average person at the beach, feel more confident and have more energy for all kinds of extracurricular activities, yes sir, sprinting can replace the gym entirely. If your goal is to build the best physique possible, then I believe the ultimate strategy is to combine sprinting with lifting weights and plyometrics. That's how elite sprinters train, and in my opinion, that is the ultimate combination. Now that this experiment is over, I intend on focusing on both. Behind the scenes, I'm designing the ultimate program for building a sprint physique, a program that can be used not only for speed, but also losing fat and building muscle through sprinting, lifting, and proper nutrition. For now, check the description. You can reach me via Instagram or email for starting your own journey and have any questions. With that being said, like this video for me. If you find it useful or interesting, click here or here to watch more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.